My guess is that finding popular sources, that is, web-based sources geared toward a general, non-specialist audience, will be a bit more intuitive for you guys than it's been using the library databases to find scholarly sources. Remember that scholarly and popular sources are geared toward different audiences. Just by looking at these two articles, you can see how they target different audiences. Here, you have lots of authors, and then down here, it's a little small, but it lists all of their institutional or their academic affiliations. Whereas over here, you have a popular article also about memory, um, and you can just see these two authors listed right here. You have to scroll all the way down to the article, the bottom of the article, or maybe Google them in order to figure out who those authors are. Overall, scholarly articles are written by academics, researchers, or other professionals for these same groups, while popular pieces are written for a general, non-professional, non-specialist audience. So how do you find good popular sources? Well, if you're like everybody else, you Google them. And that's fine, especially at the beginning of your research process, when you, do, when you want to do a general search on your topic and see what comes up. But you're also going to want to do targeted searches within certain known to be reputable sources. So I would say the New York Times, the Washington Post, the Wall Street Journal, these are really good places to start. What you're looking at right now is an example of a feature called Times Topics, which serves as a database for all articles that have ever been written in the New York Times about certain subjects or topics. So here you can see um, this is just the A's. This isn't even all the A's. So pretty much whatever your topic is, whatever your inquiry question or area of interest, if you go to Times Topics and do a search, you will probably find um, that the Times has written about it at some point. And I wanted to show you that you can access a free New York Times subscription and a free Wall Street Journal subscription um, through the John Jay uh, Library website. So if you go to library.jj.cuny.edu and you go right here, this is your New York Times subscription and here's your Wall Street Journal subscription. So you just click on those um, and fill out some information and then uh, you can read the paper that way. Um, okay, so I wanted you to know about that resource because it is a good one. Things should not be behind a paywall for you guys. Um, other good examples of popular sources that are known to be reputable, NPR, the Smithsonian, Popular Science, um, TED Talks, if you like talks, um, Scientific and American, The Lancet, The Economist, some of these are British, um, The Atlantic, Fortune Magazine, Reason Magazine, Reuters, Bloomberg, all of these are places to start that are generally known as um, having credible, valid, reputable information. So it's important to spend some time thinking about the credibility of the online sources that you're using. So next we're going to watch a video about Google search algorithm and why you can't always trust the results that come up.